Hello friends and welcome again to another Echocalypse uh, video. In this video, I'll be discussing the tier list. I'm gonna show you the tier list. This tier list, you can take it and work with it. It will describe everything that you need and according to the meta. I'm not gonna go and do any tier list like the ones that you're seeing everywhere going, uh, this tier list contradict this tier list. This is makes no sense. This is not like this. Somebody put somebody high, somebody low. This is unbiased. I will tell you where my biases are and I want them to happen, but I will not include them in the tier list. I will tell you just because I love the art or something like this. The SS category is a must have. It, they are not only the meta, they are used in every meta. The meta, I will show you what everybody else are playing and I will show you proof also in the video. I will show you in the game what are the top ranks using and the teams and what units they are building and some units why they are building them and why they are using them. Some units are higher than others just because the banner is up not because they are better than other units. The meta currently is revol revolving around fire. Everybody is using the simple basic team that I will be showing you and how it synergizes together. I'm not saying that other people making tier lists are bad or not good, but they don't have the understanding of uh, the game and they were uh, taking the information from other sources or other players or the Chinese. Even in the Chinese, the meta have changed. This tier list was good in the release of the game, also on the Chinese, and then it changed. So I've been talking to a lot of players, old players, new players, and some smart players that helped me also with that. So without further ado, let's go and uh, discuss the tier list. First of all, in the tier list, we have Audrey. Audrey, simply, right now, one or the best support in the game. She's a healing unit with rage recovery. She will give you rage, plus she will heal your units. Her uh, actual normal skill uh, she will uh, deal damage, magic damage to the enemies, uh, to one random enemy and have a 10% chance to apply silence, which will silence them. Also can go with another unit, which we will talk about later and you will play a silence comp if you want. Her ultimate, she casts a spell and gives regen for two rounds for her uh, uh, teammates and regen is at the start of every round. They recover HP equal to a certain 178% I think of her uh, attack. Uh, for two rounds, for two rounds, they're gonna regenerate health and 50% chance to add two rage for all allies or for all the targets that are getting healed, which is absolutely insane. And you want on your lineup, this is the best mechanic in the game. She heals and give you rage, which you want to maximize your DPS. Now her passive, she starts the battle with full rage, which is absolutely awesome as well. And the first time she falls, her HP falls below 30% HP. She increases all the allies attack by 10% for two rounds, which is unbelievable buff and mechanic in the game. Next unit that you're gonna see always and you need always to have is Pan Pan. Pan Pan is an insane unit and I have her actually. I acquired her, I went into the selected summons and she's the one that I selected for me, for myself, for the lineup because I got her. I didn't get Audrey for, uh, uh, if you watch the video, you're gonna check what, uh, what I got. She does a physical damage to the row in front of her of enemies and she reduces their hit rate by 10% for one round. What is hit rate is their accuracy, so, so it reduces their accuracy. She grants a shield equal to 10% of her max HP, of course, to herself and two random allies. And she blocks the next control effect for the allies in her same row. So they will block the, the control effect that they're gonna get from silence, freeze, stun, any kind of control effect. They, she will gonna block it, completely block it. She's gonna do her ultimate with the panda, if you saw it before, and then you're gonna get this immunity and you're gonna get shielded, with, which shields are very important in this game as well. And her passive, she starts the battle with full rage and she is immune to control effects in the first round if you max her out. Absolutely crazy unit, one of the best units in the game, in my opinion. Now, thirdly, we have Dina herself. Now, Dina is the best healing support in the game. As a healer, full healer, Dina is the best in the game. Hands down, she's the best healing support in the game. Now, what she does is she attacks a single target enemy with magic damage and she reduces their crit rate by 10% for one round. So every round, if she attacks by auto attack, she reduces their crit rate. She heals three allies with the lowest HP by, uh, by, her, H by her maximum or by 170% of her attack and 5% of her max HP. So the more that you build her on HP and attack, the more the heals will be better for your uh, lineup. Plus, if you max her out, she removes two negative status effects and two control effects from each heal target and reduces the rage cost of the heal targets for the next skill by one if you max her out, which is absolutely crazy for one unit to do all of this in one ultimate. And her passive, at the start of the battle, uh, the first single attacks that she, she takes will not exceed 45% of her max HP. So if a carry starts with a full, like Kiki, if you're facing a Kiki and Kiki starts with full rage and she goes and ultimate you, she will not die immediately at the start of the battle, which make her more protective. And then you're gonna have somebody, if you're playing these three on one specific lineup, they will heal back up 
to maximum HP and this will be insane actually at the start of the battle and you will keep sustaining your entire team and you can play other uh, t other heroes just to deal DPS and also save them. Now to the S tier. The S tier is the meta tier, the meta, the current meta and what everybody is running right now. And I will show you these units, three of them let's say or two of them are on every single lineup in the current meta, on every top player's lineup, everybody who progressed so far in the game, everybody who spent, these are the meta teams, these are the units that he's using. So we have Rayon, uh, Shiyu, Shiyu first of all, Shiyu is right now the meta tank, one of the best tanks in the game, she's not the best tank in the game, there's a better tank than her, but now she's the meta because of the, the things that happens with the comps that she's playing. So. Shiyu, she deals magic damage to the back row enemies and absorbs 5% of the armor and resistance for one round. She absorbs their armor and resistance for one round, which makes her really, really handy and useful. Her ultimate, and this is the best thing about her, she deals magical damage to the enemy in front of her and the surrounding. It means if she's in the middle and she hits the middle target in front of her in the row, the ones that surrounding these enemies, so the, the one behind it, the one to, to the right and to the left, will be affected with the same damage and she will up have a 50% chance to apply burn for one round and this is what's the meta all about it's about the burn teams this is the entire meta today and until there's another update or another uh, characters that will define the meta this is the meta it's the burn teams her passive when she dies like a phoenix she gets re re she revives again with 30 percent of her max hp and full rage or full rage if you can say and when you max her up she will be at 50 percent hp when uh, she but you don't you need an early the only thing that you need with her is to revive because you're gonna have a healer on your team which will help her heal and will help her sustain and most likely she will never gonna die actually she will never ever gonna die because her ultimate and if you max her out she will gain dodge for every stack of burn that she applies or anybody applies if there's burn on the enemy for every stack of burn on the enemies she'll gonna gain dodge and this will roll really hard and she will never she will be untouched with the fire team and i will show you now why so next we have on the tier list rayon is also a burn or a fire in the fire comp in the fire team this is why she's meta and she's the hardcore carry of every single lineup so Rayon deals 63% physical damage to front row enemies with a 50% chance to apply burn for one round also and when you improve her or uh, get her uh, leveled up more and more and uh, and awaken her she will get 100% or more and she will deal more physical damage she will get 100% to apply the debuff her ultimate she deals uh, physical damage to all enemies with extra true damage to 6% for each target max HP to targets with burn so if they have burn on them she will deal extra true damage and with this lineup and I will show you the third unit as well she will deal true damage and she her numbers will go crazy actually the true damage does not exceed 100% 120% of Ray, uh, Rayon's uh, attack but but she will increase this if you increase her more and more so the more that she has attack the more the true damage will be inflicted on the enemies and now the best thing about her her passive for each burn that the enemy have for every burn rayon gains one stack of thunderbolt lasting the entire battle and this stacks up to 10 times and what it does do it gives you attack crit rate and crit damage for one percent so what I'm saying, it's 10% attack, 10% crit damage, 10% crit rate for the entire battle. She will get it for the entire battle and it starts from the start of the battle. Why? Why is that? Because the next one on the tier list is Winnow. Now Winnow is a support AOE damage dealing. She's a heavy burst support, heavy burst damage support. The damage that she does is physical and it's insane actually for a support, it's insane. The thing is, with Winnow, she deals physical damage uh, on auto attack, 88% of attack to a single enemy uh, row of enemies and reduce their crit resistant rate by 5% for one round. Who benefits from that? Rayon. She can crit even more on the enemies. Now, her ultimate, she deals 247% physical damage to a single enemy row with 50% chance to apply burn for one round. Again, applying burn and she will deal massive damage to this row, 247%. Of physical damage this is huge that's not small numbers and if you increase of course if you level her up more and more and increase her in star power she will apply uh, the 50% uh, the will go up to 100% and she will apply 100% indefinite burn to the enemies now how this team synergizes together and why Rayon gets buffed the dodge of uh, Shiyu gets buffed with Winnow's passive and how is that so Winnow's passive at the start of the battle she inflicts two burn on uh, she inflicts burn on two random enemies for one round 
and at the end of each round she inflicts burn to one random enemy for one round so indefinitely 100% every round you will have two or three or more burn because of these three together on the same lineup now who goes good with the uh, fire teams who you can play these six together this will be a perfect team if you play them together now if you don't want to play them that much together you can remove one of the support one of the three supports if you want and play another unit that applies burn and who is that it's ferentina yes you heard it here first folks Everybody is shitting on Ferentina on their tier list. Ah, she's okay, she's decent, she's not that bad, she's... No, 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 she's the meta. She's the current meta. Of course you can replace her. The burn from all of these three is good enough. It's fine, you can play them, you can put somebody else. Especially now that we have the banner of Kiki up, you can max out Kiki. Kiki is easier to max than Fer uh, Ferentina. So you can play Kiki on the same lineup with them. So Kiki and them plus two supports it will be fine it will be perfect actually it will not be a problem but if you want to play meta full uh, burn team and burn your enemies and play and check the best lineups in the, in, in the whole pvp right now ferentina is one of them so she deals physical damage uh, to back row enemies with 30 percent chance to transfer one attribute debuff to the targets so if she has a debuff if you're playing against enemies that deal burn as well and hit you and they're not playing Ferentina, they're playing these three with these three, and they hit you with burn, she will re repel one burn and give it back to them. This is on auto attack, okay? Now, her ultimate, she deals physical damage to front row enemies with 50% chance to apply burn for two rounds. Two rounds as well, and 50% to apply burn for the front row enemies. So, you can hit two enemies, or three enemies. Winnow will hit three, 100%, she will hit three or four burns. Rayon will hit two or three burns, and uh, Chiyu will hit two or three burn. Do you know what's going on? What does burn do? The burn, this is exactly what it does. Burn. Take debuff damage, which is the burn, equal to 10% of the caster attack for each round. 10% every round of their attack is applied on the enemies that have burn. The burn can stack indefinitely. There is no limit to the burn stacks. If you can hit a target with five, six stacks immediately, they will take it. They didn't include in the game any uh, cap for the stacking of burns. This is why this is the current meta. This is why this is the best lineup, the best characters to go with in the game. Plus, not only that, when you involve her and increase her more and more, she inflicts silence on the targets that already have burn. So your team will be stable. They will get silence. It means they will not use their skills. They will not use their ultimates. And they will gonna get burned. And your multiplier will increase because of every burn that you put. Because this team synergizes all together this is what i want to say i never seen a tier list everybody shitting on rihanna or rayon rayon everybody is shitting on chiu i don't know why everybody putting winnow on, on c and b tier what do you mean everybody is playing winnow winnow is one of the best supports for the fire meta in the game and rayon is the best carry for the fire team and ferentina is the second best and she applies burn and silence and she gained insight apply insight to the units in the same row for two rounds what does insight do let me read it if under control status at the end of the round reduces the rage of the enemy in the corresponding position by two so if you max ferentina out and you have burn or you have debuffs on the enemies every enemy with a debuff for a single debuff you reduce two rage on them so what does that mean you accumulate rage with audrey for your team and you reduce rage from your enemy it means you're gonna get high dps you're gonna get, act more better faster than them all now her passive for ferentina and this is why i'm talking in depth about this specific tier list these lineup the others i will not talk too much about them i will just mention what they do and why you should or you shouldn't have them or build them right now because it's not the current meta or whatever the players are facing because you're not gonna counter them and i'll be talking about uh, ferentina's passive now when receiving the first rage reduction effect from an active attack it restores for uh, rage, uh, for rage immediately. So what does that mean? That means if they're playing any kind of unit that reduces your rage and she get the first rage reduction, she's gonna immediately get four rage points and this will allow her to cast her ultimate even faster. And this is a great mechanic actually for a carry. She doesn't amplify her damage, she doesn't gain crit, attack or whatever. Rayon does that. She just stays there to apply the burn and if she dies, these three can carry with two supports. That's how good this team is. Now, to the A tier. A tier, I'm not saying it's bad. It's also could be co con considered as S, but A tier because they're good units. You can use them, they're versatile. You can always use them, but they're not the current meta, but they're super good. And when the meta drops, actually you can put Ferentina here and put Fenriru here, and you can put Kiki as well here. But I'm talking about metas and synergies with the same lineups. You can never go wrong if you did this. 
First of all, I'm gonna talk about Fenriru. Fenriru, Fenriru is a unit that you gonna obtain as free to play and you're gonna have copies of her and her skin. She does insane damage. She does physical damage to row of enemies on her uh, normal attack and she gains a permanently one uh, range uh, uh, and it stacks up for one. If you build her up, it stacks up for two, which is actually good for an auto attack. Her AOE skill, which is her ultimate, she deals damage to four random enemies with additional 100% true damage, which is really good actually. True damage is one of the best multipliers in the game or the best uh, mechanics of the game and her passive at the start of every odd uh stage let's say she starts you start at round one round one is odd she gonna get 10 percent increase in resistance and armor if you start with an odd round let's say uh, round two you're gonna get increase by 10 percent in her attack and this stacks up for two times it means she will get the 20 percent attack and she will gonna get the 20 percent armor and resistance and it will go more and more if you uh, rank her up more it will go up to i think 20 percent which is really great very solid one great dps in the game kiki now everybody is building Kiki, why? If Kiki wasn't in the banner, if she didn't have a banner, if the banner was for somebody else, for Fiorentina, for Rayon, let's say for Zawa, or for Tawaret, you will see everybody building them and utilizing them. Kiki is good, she's decent. She's one character that's independent. She doesn't depend on anybody. Any buffs that she gets, she welcomes. She needs a lot of healing actually. And she's a burst damage DPS, she bursts. She can one tap anybody, she has a high DPS damage healing. Not the best in the game, actually. The best in the game is not available yet, but I will be talking about it later. So what does she does? Her auto attack, she deals magic damage to a single enemy row and additional 88% magic damage to the targets who's below 50%. So if they are below 50%, she, on her auto attack, she will deal extra 88% magical damage. Not pure, but magical, which is still good, actually. If they go low in HP, she deals more damage. If they don't, this is the problem. You need them to drop low in HP and you need her to stay up on HP, you don't need her to lose HP. This is the downside of Kiki, actually, and this is what I was talking and telling uh, my friends that I was talking to and tell them like, uh, how were you playing her in China? She she looks awesome to me, and they told me she has a downside. You need to some certain conditions for her to work perfectly, flawlessly, and this is the flaw about her. Her ultimate, she deals massive damage, almost 250% of magic damage to a random row of enemies. When they are when when she is full in HP, the skill deals additional magical damage, which is equal to 150% of attack. When she is full of HP, imagine she's casting her ultimate and she's not full of HP, you're not gonna get this bonus. And this was the downside that I was talking. And when we played a lineup, he showed me the same lineup. These three supports, and no, no, two supports. He was playing two supports. I, I think two supports. And he was playing Rayon, uh, Rayon and Chiyu and uh, Wino and Kiki. Th the team that we were facing was Fiorentina, Rayon, Shiyu, uh, Wino, and two supports. I forgot. They were the same support. They played against each other. She did nothing. This team won. The meta team. The fire team. This is the downside of her. Buffs, debuffs, shields, healing all affect each other, especially when they synergize with each other. Actually, uh, Fenriru does better than Kiki. Fenriru is, better, is a better carry than Kiki. 100%. I tell you that. Go test it. Same level units. Dealing damage with deficit. She's at 50% HP, the enemy is 100%. She's at 50%, the enemy's at 100%. She deals more damage, she doesn't. You need her at all time on full HP or above 95% or full HP because her ultimate is full HP conditioned. And you need her to be above 59, uh, 95% if you have her unlocked. But if you max her out, she goes to 75%, I guess, on her passive. And we'll be talking about their passive now. So her passive is at the start of the battle, she will get full rage. She will be at full rage at the start of the battle. Plus, she will deal 20% extra damage until the end of the battle until she drops below 95% of HP. So, somebody, if they're playing a low tier unit, and I will be talking, I'm spoiling the low tier unit, like Baphomet, okay? Somebody like Baphomet. Baphomet is a tank, she returns damage. And if she bursts from the start, she will lose that because of the reflection of, the, of what she's gonna get. This is why she needs healing all the time up to her. I think she's decent, she's okay. For me, I love her. Actually, I like her. And this is my bias talking. I want to put her in an SS tier because she's currently available and she's, you can say meta. Everybody is pulling her and using her. So she's meta, right? She is in the meta, to be honest, but she's not a part of the meta. She's in the meta because she, her banner is up. Anybody, if her banner was up, everybody will be playing her. If, if Winnow's banner is up, everybody will be playing her. Well, actually, everybody is playing her because she's that good. And now her banner is up, everybody will play her. But when if Aiken banner was up and her banner is up, nobody will use Kiki. Everybody will go with Aiken because Aiken is one of the best units in the game, actually, and she's 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 in SS tier, but she's not available yet. Now, talking about units that are, can go with every lineup, the MC, yes, the MC, female or male, they have a stun. Stun is a great uh, ability. You're gonna have him uh, no matter what. He's unlocked for you. You're gonna unlock him to SR, then to SSR. 
and the, he's a great unit in general overall dealing damage and sustaining himself and stun any unit that's stunned it means they lose their turn if you stun a unit they lose their turn if they're auto attacking they lose their auto attack if they want to ult and you stun them before they ult they lose their turn next turn they're gonna start and if you are full rage with any kind of mechanic and stun again they will lose their turn again or if you silence them on the second round they lose the turn until he recharges again and stuns again this is a great unit actually in my opinion let's talk about the non meta units that could be used and actually after this meta drop of the fire and with the release of other units and other synergies and comps the best tank in the game which is yulia yes yulia is the best tank of the game right now uh shiyu is the best is a better tank than her because of the fire synergy but if we want to be talking about a single unit without depending on anything else yulia is the best tank in the game hands down so her auto attack, she deals physical damage to a single enemy and restores 5% of her max HP, which is, makes her self-sustain, which is a great thing for uh, a unit. Restores 5% of her max HP, and this will go up, um, up if you uh, upgrade her to 10%, which is really, really great. Her ultimate is she deals physical damage to the units in front of her and surrounding enemies with a 60% chance to inflict taunt. 60%, this is when you max her out. Before you max her out, it's a less percentage, of course. And for each enemy with freeze, she applies shields equal to 150% of her attack on herself and the surrounding units around her, so she can protect her. And she reduces the damage bonuses of all targets hit by 25% for one round. It means every unit that she hit, 25% of their damage will be reduced. If there's freeze, she's gonna give the get, gain the shield and give the shield to them. And you're gonna tell me, how she gonna get the freeze? She's gonna get the freeze with another unit that we'll be talking about because it synergizes there and hopefully the freeze will be another meta because I love the freeze. Now, the best mechanic for Yulia, uh, and, and this is what I love about her, is her passive. At the end of every round, Yulia restores 5% of her max HP and 5% of the armor and resistance and stacks up for three rounds, for three times. It stacks up for three times. Every single time the round ends, she gets that. And the maximum is three stacks, which is insane. So she auto attacks and heals. And at the end of every round, she heals. Plus she gains uh, uh, armor and she gains resistance, which is absolutely crazy. And if you max her out, on top of that, when she reaches two stacks, she will increase damage reduction by 20% for all allies. And, and when she dies, this will get removed, actually. But this is what's good about her. Because if you have her, she most likely will not die if you play her on a perfect lineup that applies freeze. Now, next, we have Nightingale. Nightingale, everybody also is thrashing on her, saying that she's mediocre, she's not good. She's one of the great units in the game, actually, for DPS. She's even better than Kiki, in my opinion. Because she's not a featured ban If she has her own banner, Kiki doesn't have her own banner, everybody will play Nightingale. And Nightingale is actually better than her. Now, what does Nightingale do? She deals magic, magic damage and uh, to the highest attack enemy and they reduce their crit rate by 50% for one round. This is the basic thing that she does actually by auto-attacking. So, she, she will uh, hit the, the enemy with the highest attack, re reduce their crit rate, and protect all of your lineup. That's what she does. And she deals magic damage which is a high number, actually 114% magic damage to a single enemy, to the highest single enemy with the highest attack, which is great, actually. Now, her AoE is the best one. She deals magic damage to four random enemies with a 40% chance to inflict silence on each target for one round. So she will deal silence. And who goes with silence? The best, uh, one of the best units, which is Audrey. And Audrey also applies silence. Nightingale applies silence, which goes perfectly together, and it will give you a good synergy. And you're gonna see something else. Nightingale will be played a lot with uh, Chiyu instead of Fiorentina. Why? Nightingale gives also dodge. If you read her passive, uh, at the start of every battle, increase the dodge of a dodge rate of all allies by 25% for one round. And she applies this effect again when she dies. It means she starts the battle, she gives dodge for her without even applying burn, which Winner will apply burn, so increase the dodge as well and protect everybody else with the dodge. And when she dies, everybody gains dodge, so they, they will have also a survivability kit for them to survive, which is absolutely insane. Now, speaking about Freeze, let's talk about Freeze. Let's put her here because together, we, they go together in a synergy. Let's yeah, keep it like this, it doesn't matter. Niz. Niz is the best friend of Yulia. So Niz uh, deals magic damage to a single enemy with a 10% chance to apply Cold. And what does Cold do? Cold will transform into Freeze and uh, for the first time. When she, you apply Cold on them, they will, got, uh, they will be frozen. This cold will stay. The next time they don't get cold, they will not get freeze, but the cold will stay. Next time they up, you apply cold, so it will be two stacks of cold, it will reapply the freeze again, which is really good. I think it's a very good function, in my opinion. Now, her ultimate, which will amplify the cold or make it more. So, 
she deals magic damage to the enemy in the corresponding position, it means in front of her, and the surrounding enemies uh, to this enemy, and with a 30% to apply cold on each of and one uh, single one of them. So she will freeze somebody else, and she will apply a debuff also of cold on another. And if they did got frozen before with one uh, cold, and they got the second cold, she will apply freeze again to these units. And who benefits uh, from freeze? And we talked about it's Yulia and her passive. She gains full rage at the start of the battle. Now we have Vivi. Vivi is also a good support in my opinion. She's one of the good supports actually to run. If you didn't have one of these supports and you want to play somebody, Vivi is the way to go. Or Nephthys. I mean, I I will be talking about Nephthys. In my opinion, for me, for me, actually for me, for this meta lineup, in me, exactly only for these meta, I think Nephthys is here with them because she's meta and I will be talking about it. And I will tell you why we're not playing her and why we're not. I'm not going to include her because I myself want to include her. I will be talking about her soon and telling you what I understand about her. Now, Vivi. Vivi is a support. So she deals magic damage to the enemy with the highest HP percentage. And she applies the shield uh, She applies the shield of 50% of her attack to the ally with the lowest HP percentage and will keep them alive, which is a good uh, mechanic and support. This is with her auto attack. So if she auto attacks like this, it's crazy for a support, in my opinion. Her ultimate, she deals uh, damage to three magic damage to three random enemies and increase damage reduction by 15% for allies with the less with if they have 50% uh, less HP for one round. It means uh, if they are less than 50% because she's healing on her auto attack always and always. If they're less than 50% HP, she's gonna give them 15% uh, damage reduction, which will help them a lot. And she will attack and uh, uh, deal damage to three random enemies. I think it's mediocre. I think it's fine. It's okay. The reduction, the damage reduction is really good, but you need the condition to go to below 50% HP unless you upgrade her and made her better. Her passive is what makes her stand out uh, differently. Her passive is really good. At the start of the battle, she gives a, a, a shield by her five max, I think 5% of her max HP to all your uh, allies, which will protect them a little bit and reduces the next skill damage taken by 30% for, uh, for one run. So it means if they're gonna take uh, skill damage to their face, it will be reduced by 30%, which is really decent. Actually, she's a, she's, she's a, like we say, a control unit that will control the damage that's taken and she will heal and support your uh, lineup, which is really actually good. Now, in my opinion, what I said before and I stand by it right now, Nephthys, is one of the best supports in the game. In my opinion, one of the best healers because Dina is a better healer than her. Nobody categorize her up with her. So she's the second best to her, in my opinion. Now, of course, I'm not, uh, when I'm putting these here, it doesn't mean somebody is better than somebody. You can put them whatever you want, actually. Just let's continue. So what does she do? She only heals. She doesn't attack with her auto attack. She have an auto heal, not attack. So she heals the lowest HP uh, ally uh, with a percentage of her attack, which is massive, actually, 114%. Uh, for every 10% HP lost uh, of that target, the healing effect is increased by 5%. So it's maximum healing. It's full healing, maximum healing. The more that you get damage, the more she heals you, and so on and so on. This is why, in my opinion, it's a great. And I'll be telling you why it's good with this meta team. So, her ultimate is she heals three allies with the lowest HP percentage for 100%, 170% of her attack. The, the cool thing about it, for every enemy with a debuff, for every enemy with a debuff, so if the whole entire enemy is the six of them having debuff, Every deb debuffed enemy will increase the effect of healing by 20%. Which with the fire team is insane because these units, these 1, 2, 3, 4, will apply burn to, the, to all of the enemies. 100% you will have burn on all of the enemies. And for all of that, even if you take damage, you don't even care. You can play Pan Pan, you will shield everybody. They take damage, shields are off, they go lower in HP. She heals everyone or three of them and every round she heals somebody with herself, uh, with her auto heal and everybody will be healed and she increases her heals because all of the debuffs that happening which is crazy if you play Audrey with them because Audrey inflicts silence it's considered a debuff as well and uh, she also uh, does a debuff Ferentina then your whole team will be healed so what do you need? you need I think uh, even without Ferentina you don't need to play Ferentina you can play Pan Pan Audrey her or Pan or Fa Ferentina Pan Pan her and the rest of the team this is what I'm telling you these top three are a must and you can play them as this sticks together if you want you can remove one add one do whatever you want and again because kiki is easy to build this is what i'm saying kiki is easy to build as she has a, her own banner with 40 percent rate up on her banner for herself it's three percent to get her but 40 percent to get her and not get somebody else as an ssr on the banner so this is why kiki can go well with this lineup as well but as i said fire team plus nemphis uh, will be great actually 
And one thing I love about her also is her passive. So what does her passive do? First of all, she starts the battle with full rage. That's awesome. And when she takes damage from the attacker, the healing and the shields received are reduced by 30% for one round for that attacker. So if somebody attacks her, let's say Kiki starts the battle for rage, she attacks her. She will lose 30% of the healing and the shielding that she gets from her lineup. And she will have full rage, so she will heal herself and heal everybody else at the start of the battle. You can counter Kiki easily with having Nephthys. So if you're having problems, if you're a top player on your server or you're the second best because the first have a built Kiki that is massive, you can play her immediately on your lineup and you shut down his Kiki. End of story. There's no problem anymore. Because Kiki, if she's not full HP and protected by shields, so she doesn't lose HP, she will not deal as much damage as possible and you're just gonna shut her down immediately. Now, another uh, underrated unit, which is Zawa. I will not say underrated. She's overrated sometimes. She's underrated sometimes. She's good. She's decent. Whenever we're gonna get the uh, blind comp, when we have more units that inflict blind uh, and accuracy down, she will be decent, actually, in my opinion. She's a control, blind control unit. She does good damage, decent damage, actually. She's also a unit that you can play on a lineup, will help you. She's not the best, not the worst. She's not, eh. No, she's good, actually. You can play her. If you don't have all the team synergy and you're building somebody and you're having a lot of copies of her, it's not wrong to build her. Now, on the good units, that's okay. You can have them if you build them. We have Stara. Now, what does Stara does? Uh, let's talk about her ultimate. She uh, deals magical damage, actually, to the front row enemies and apply Mirror Flower. What does Mirror Flower do? Every time uh, uh, Rage is consumed, they will take additional two damage uh, to 50% of Stara's uh, attack for all the enemies, which is really good, adds in the DPS. You can play her actually with a fire, uh, with a fire team. You can uh, play her instead of uh, uh, Frentina, and it would be okay, actually, it's decent. Her damage is okay. I don't find it better than the others, but it's okay. It's not very bad for a support, of course, because she's a buffer and a support, which does damage, which is really decent. And her passive actually is the buffing uh, and the supporting aspect for her, actually. Uh, at the start of the battle, you're gonna gain uh, crit rate uh, for one round, which is a 10% crit rate for all allies for one round. And uh, if you increase her and uh, uh, invest in her, she's gonna buff you with 20% crit rate and 10% crit damage, or 10% crit uh, uh, damage and 20% crit rate uh, at the start of the battle for only one round. And this is the downfall of it. I think one round is uh, so little. If she does it for three rounds or two rounds, that will be really bigger and be really huge. The most likely, most uh, overrated unit in the game right now and she's good actually she's good. she's not bad but it's not the meta for her and hopefully she will become the meta when she has her banner and Regina has her banner and Zawaret has her banner set Zawaret Regina will be one lineup that will be not contested in this game and it will be very hard to play against she's really a good DPS really a good unit uh, the problem is now that she doesn't work that good with the meta that we're defining and these units can work with the meta all of these that you see here you can play them with this lineup and they will work set could work but she doesn't offer that much and she needs a lot of support actually to work and we're gonna talk about it she attacks she pass she does damage to four random enemies and have a 50 percent chance to inflict armor break and armor break reduces uh armor and resistance by 10 percent as well as damage reduction by 10 percent which is really decent i think it's nice and her ultimate she deals damage to four uh random enemies and she applied bleeds for uh enemies that have shield so if you don't run any shielders and they don't have any shields on the team, she will not apply the bleed. And the bleed is a good functionality actually because it's a damage debuff that deals 5% of max HP but doesn't exceed 100% HP of the attacker. So not 100% uh, uh, of her of her attack, not more than 100% of her attack. And it it uh, it ignores armor and resistance. So it's staple uh, damage that goes 5% of their max HP, which is really decent. And the more that you apply, the more that uh, they have. And the, her passive, and there's the problem that I was talking about, but it's not a big problem. Everybody runs uh, healers. Everybody runs some sort of shield so her passive is when she normal attacks uh, her skills deal 30% uh, extra damage to targets that have already received healing or are receiving healing currently or shields and it uh, lasts until the current of the round so that's that's really good I think it's mediocre I think it could be countered easily this is why she falls a little bit on the tier list now we have Tawaret and Tawaret works perfectly with Seth and we're gonna talk about this and Regina actually next these three works together with each other and I'll be talking about it so Tawaret deals physical damage to one single enemy so she's a single target unit and deals uh, ble and apply bleed on them for two rounds and her ultimate she deals physical damage massive single uh, physical damage actually to a single row of enemies for each debuff on the targets she deals 50% additional physical damage up to 150% can't exceed more and this is not only good that it goes with set and goes with Regina it goes with any debuffer so 
in the meta she can play with them because of the debuffs but the multiplier is not that high because she goes to only 150 percent and it goes higher actually it can go to 300 percent if you invest in her but i would i would say and encourage you to invest in these current meta units not Ferentina. I'm not saying specifically Ferentina, which Ferentina will, will last you until uh, in every kind of uh, in PVE in every kind of uh, situation. But if you want to uh, go and invest in somebody else, try to invest in Kiki right now because she's available. Try to invest in uh, Feriru, she's available, and save for other units, especially for Aiken when she drops. Aiken will be a game changer. Actually, everybody will play her. Now let's talk about Tawaret's passive. When she attacks enemies with armor break, uh, her attacks increases by 20% which is absolutely insane she doesn't apply armor break herself but who does apply uh, armor break it's set this is why they work together and now we'll be talking about regina regina is actually a good support and that works together good and she can works in many kind of situations and lineups especially with the rage uh, control because she reduces rage as well so she hits the enemy in front uh, the front row enemy with physical damage and reduce their hit rate by 10% for one round. What is hit rate? It's accuracy. She lowers their accuracy by 10%. Her ultimate, which is the good thing about her, so uh, she deals also uh, physical damage to the front row enemies and apply armor break for two rounds. That's indefinite. And when you improve her and level her up and uh, you get more stars of her and you invest in her, she will remove one rage from the front line, one rage from the back line. I think that's uh, what I read. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I just double checked. So that's actually good for a control unit as for rage and she works great because she applies armor break and Tawaret benefits on that set benefit on that and she applies it which is actually good her passive and what i think her passive is a little bit bad in my opinion this is my opinion now because i read her passive her passive is every time she hits she applies or she gain a stack of expertise and uh, she accumulates these stacks of uh, expertise and when she dies every stack of expertise reduces one rage from one random enemy so you need her to die actually so she can reduce the energy which is, i don't think that she's the best option for that i mean she, it's a bonus but i don't think it's the best option as for support if it was something like sustain heal or shield or a buff of damage reduction that would be even better or if she reduces the rage uh, every two rounds that would be better maybe in my head i don't know let me know about it uh, and what you think about it what jet as much as i love her art her skills her mechanic i love it myself personally and I wanted to put her higher on the tier list, but I can't. I want to be honest with you and give you an honest review of the tier list. So Wajet, I don't recommend her personally for anybody to build her. The, her skills are okay. It's niche. It's it's okay, actually. But it's you still take damage. It's still like not the best kind of... It's, it's not like... It's transforming control, but not actually control. And I'll be talking about it. She deals magic damage to the front row enemies and reduces their skill damage by 10% for one round, which is actually good. Reducing the skill damage, you will take less damage actually from skills. Now her ultimate, and here's what uh, I was talking about. She deals magic damage to back row enemies with a 50% chance to turn each target into a mummy for one round. Only one round. Now the mummy is... That's what happens. They will not... They will uh, restrain their alter, uh, attributes, all of their attributes. It they will normal attack and uh, the, the normal attacks is replaced with uh, dry claws which deals 100% of damage to a single enemy and it's their skills is replaced with sand burial which deals 100% damage to front line enemies which stills you're dealing damage actually so you're not like silencing them or stunning them it's mummifying them which is okay because you're gonna shut down their all effects and if they're running all the healers in the back line you have no heal because she transformed them into mummy that's not 100% transformation, she has a 50% chance to transform them. And when you max her out and invest in her, it has a 100% chance to mummify them, which is really good actually. I don't think that it's an insane for one round mummifying them. They will break through the uh, mummifying, they will have their rage and they will continue attacking. But it's, it's a cool mechanic, nonetheless, I like it in my opinion. I'ma build her anyway because I just like her. I just like the character, I like her abilities of mummifying. I find it really trolling, she's a troll unit, she trolls you. The good thing about her in the meta and why you can play her in the meta here with the lineups. You can. She's not the best, but you can. Because her passive, whenever there's a 50% chance when she auto attacks, she can extend the debuff on the enemy or the, the, the duration of the debuff, which is the mummify or the burn or bleed, armor break, freeze, silence, whatever is the debuff or the stun. She can be really decent in that department, but there's a 50% chance you need to invest in her actually. So it becomes a 100% chance, which I find it's kind of useful, not that useful, but it's kind of good. This is why I like her personally. And I think there's a lot of high potential for her. Now, the last unit on our uh, B rank will be Beam. 
What does Beam do? So her skills is she hits a single row of enemies, increase armor and resistance by 5% for one round. Which is really good. That's a good supporting uh, aspect actually, in my opinion. She's a DPS, not a support. But this is a supporting action, which I find really good. Now her ultimate, she deals physical damage to a single row of enemies. This attack deals additionally 2 damage equal to 200% of her armor and resistance. So if you want to build her up, you need to build a whole team around her that gives resistance and armor for her actually to do insane damage which is I find a little bit hard to do sometimes you have counter you have a lot of damage coming to you the armor will not last or, or the armor will, or resistance reduction that will also be affecting her and she will not gain these unbelievable buffs her passive also decent not that bad her passive uh, she will take less 30% uh, less damage at the start of the round or on the first only first round and uh, her skills will be dealing additional true damage to 5% of her HP loss. So every 5% uh, 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 HP loss, she will be inflicting additional true damage. I don't know how much is the true damage. Now that's it for her. Now let's talk about Garula. She's the first entry in the C, tank, uh, C position and she's a tank. She's a reflecting tank. She's all about reflect, so she reflects damage. Not the best in the game. Actually, if you play Baphomet with her as both of them reflect damage, it will be a nice comp. But Right now, it's not the meta, and I don't see it being a meta soon, unless they buff the uh, reflect damage, she will be decent. She's one of the units that I don't recommend to use or build. She She's good, she sustains a little bit. She deals a single, uh, she deals physical damage to single row of enemies, and she reduces the damage bonuses that they get by 5% for one round. And her ultimate, which I was talking about sustainability, she deals damage to two enemies with the highest base HP and applies glazed chains on them, taking away healing effects for one round. What does that mean? The glazed chains, when the target HP is being restored, 15% of the healing amount is transferred to Garula, up to 150% of her attack, no more. Which is good sustainability, she will stay surviving a little bit if there was healing. If there was no healing in that round, she will not gain anything. Now her passive, each time she receives healing, she increases reflect damage by 5% for two rounds, stacking up to two times at maximum. And this reflect damage is reflect proportion of damage uh, from an active attack up to 18 times per round, which is, I find decent, not the best in the game, but it's okay. Our cute Baphomet, and she's my main tank, sadly so far because I don't have anybody else to tank for me. She's really decent, she's okay. I'll be talking about her and explaining her really fast. So she does, as normally, she does uh, magic damage uh, to the front row enemies and increase armor and resistance of surrounding uh, allies by 5% for one round, which is okay. Uh, her ultimate, she deals magic damage to the front row enemies and apply evil's god protection on herself for one round. And this, it's absorbed damage equal to 18% of her maximum HP. 50% of the absorbed damage is evenly reflected to all enemies in the next actions. And this is what I was talking about, the reflect meta. It's not staple, it doesn't work with each other. Like, it doesn't coordinate with Garula really good. Now, another very highly rated support, which is Bastet. People love her because the way she looks. She has nice assets, her art is off the hook. She looks really nice. She's a support. She deals maximal da maximum damage to a single enemy and reduces the target healing received by 30% for two rounds. The good thing about her that you can use her as a counter for Kiki. Everybody is building Kiki right now. If you use her, she's gonna go and uh, remove 30% uh, of the healing so she can counter her. So she will not get so much heals and she will not be at full HP. She will not deal maximum damage. Now Camilla, I don't want to say Camilla she's in a C tier. She's between B and C. I think she's a high C, low B. We can put her in, 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 in B rank or in C rank. It doesn't matter that much. There's a lot of other units that you can build. I think she's a good damage dealer because she's a strong DPS. She deals uh, tons of DPS. So uh, her first skill is physical damage to front row enemies with 10% uh, lifesteal or drain. And her ultimate also physical damage to front row enemies with 15% drain or lifesteal. And her passive is decent. When she drops below 50% HP, she increases her attack, armor, and resistance by 20% for two rounds. Plus, uh, she counters attack when she gets below 50% of her HP or take uh, damage that exceeds 50% of her max HP. She launches a normal attack up to one time per round. And when you, of course, uh, invest in her, that will be more helpful. Now, about the units that we don't have right now, but they will be upcoming next, which is Aiken. Aiken is SS tier, by the way. When she drops, she will be really, really great. Uh, Horus, she's not a meta, but she's here, and she will be up there whenever the meta comes, because there's a lot of synergies that you can play with. Also good. Mori, I don't know too much about Mori. I'm not gonna talk about her right now. 
I will do my research and let you know later. And if we get the Overlord uh, collab, I hope we do because I'm gonna just get grab Albedo. Albedo is, if you don't know, is my favorite waifu all time. In every single game we played, I just go for her. I buy her if she's for money. So we will be having Albedo and we will be having Shaltir. I don't know anything about them. I didn't study them. I didn't ask about them. I didn't. I just know that they are there. There's other many other units that I can include, and they will be here. And this is uh, this includes everything for our tier list. Now, for everybody that is asking, oh, how did you come up with the tier list? Who said that this is the meta or whatever? Simply, let me show you. So here we are. If we want to go into the game and check what is the meta and what is what is not the meta, you can go to patrol. You can go to cage fight and you can click on your rankings and check the best players and the top players what they're using. So, personal profile. Oh, so who's this? Rayon. Who's this? Winnow. Who's this? Shiyu. And of course, Ferentina. Audrey, the best support. And he's playing another damage dealer. He can play Pan Pan, he can play uh, somebody else, uh, maybe Dina. It doesn't matter, he can play any kind of attack, but because she's featured on the banner, Kiki, she's featured in the game, she has her own banner, everybody is pulling on her and maxing her out, so this is why she's a high damage dealer, this is why he have her here. Shout out to him, good player. Raiden, another good player, he's top tier. What do we have? Again, we see Rayon, we see Shiyu, we see uh, uh, Winno. Oh my god, the same units that I told you about. And here we see Vivi, and I told you she's decent support. We see Pan Pan, of course Pan Pan is here. Audrey. Not playing Dina, he's playing Vivi. Maybe Vivi is very much evolved and he have her more on his lineup. If he have Dina, of course he would be playing Dina. Or Nephthys, she will be great actually in this lineup. Perfect lineups, actually perfect lineup. The third guy, same lineup. Pan Pan, Rayon, Shiyu, Audrey. And he's playing two DPS. I don't know why, but maybe it works for him. Very perfect. Again, other lineup. Winnow, Audrey, uh, Kiki, Dina, Rayon and Shiyu. Rayon and Shiyu, you'll see them. Always winnow most of the time. Audrey always you're gonna see her. You see Pan Pan, Ferentina, Kiki, and uh, Finriru a lot on these lineups. If we're gonna go and check all the other lineups again, winnow. These three are staple. They will not change them. He's playing Niz. Niz, I told you she's okay. She could be played. You can play any other units with them. You can play them. Again, the best uh, synergy. Look at this synergy. Look, fire, Rayon, fire, Shiu, Ferentina, fire. Winnow, fire and burn, the burn synergy. Pan Pan, of course, he can play another support. He doesn't need more damage with Kiki, but again, they're playing Kiki. This is not the best units that they have. This is the lineup displayed. This is the current lineup that they're playing. This is what I'm talking about. This is how you know. If we go more and more and check other players, as you see, Ferentina, uh, Shiyu, Rayon, uh, uh, Pan Pan, Audrey, and he's not playing Winnow. Probably he didn't get her or didn't. Uh, so he have Fenriru at plus three, which is absolutely crazy. Also having them up. So this is concluded, it concludes this all to our tier list, a new day, a new game. And let me know about your opinion. Tell me about uh, how you think about this tier list and if you have any suggestions. And if you want me to do an SR tier list, also let me know. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't, I thank you for watching. And as always, stay frosty. Peace.